Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to have eight tips and tricks to help you make perfect summer sausage. Hit that subscribe button down there. Don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any videos. Check this out. All right, we are going to be making this summer sausage from a kit. This is not really a recipe video. This is about how to make the summer sausage perfect. There's a lot of recipes out there. There's a lot of kits out there. But honestly, you know what? The process is more important to how your sausage turns out than the kit. Kits are great, and the recipes are great, and the Lord knows there's a bunch of them, and they're really good. But this is going to help you make any of your kits perfect every single time. Now, just for a record, we are using the High Mountain Summer Sausage Kit. This kit comes with seasoning and cure for up to 30 pounds. We've already made a 15-pound batch, so I'm using the other half of the kit for this video. Also, for record, we're going to be doing about two cups of diced jalapenos and high-temperature cheddar cheese that we got from Butcher and Packer. All right, we have 15 pounds of venison with 20% beef fat in it. Again, this isn't about the recipe as much as the process, but tip number one, keep your meat cold. This is right out of the refrigerator. We thawed it in the refrigerator. This meat is in the low 30s. In fact, it's still got a little bit of ice on the outside of the casing there. So keep your meat cold is tip number one. All right, I know I said that this wasn't about the recipe, and it's really not, but these summer sausage kits from High Mountain and some others are just really good. You don't have to run all over town looking for ingredients. You don't have to worry about mixing the measuring. You just dump everything in and go. And obviously, there'll be a link down in the description below to all of this stuff. Now, tip number two, use enough water. Water is your friend when you're making sausage. The kit actually calls for 12 ounces for 15 pounds of meat, but I'm gonna do two full cups and just a little extra, and I'll explain why. When you get in here to mix all of this stuff up, that water is gonna help that cure and those spices get blended pretty equally throughout all of your meat. Especially when you have a lot of meat like this, this stuff sucks up water like you won't believe. You can see already that that probably two and a half cups of water is getting sucked right into this meat. And that's going to make all of this mixing go a lot easier. It's going to make it mix a whole lot better. The better you get this mixed up, the better your sausage is going to be. And water is going to help you. Plus, it's going to shed that water anyway during the smoking or cooking process. So how cold is cold enough? Those are my hands after washing all the sticky meat off. When you get this stuff mixed up really well, this meat's going to get really, really sticky and hard to mix and hard to get off your fingers when you're done. That's a good sign. That means you got it cold enough and you got it mixed well enough. So now at this point, you'd add in any of the stuff you're going to add to your sausage. Peppers and cheese, this way you don't break it all up during the first mixing process. And we are adding a pound and a half. It's typically one pound for every 10 pounds of meat. So we're doing a pound and a half of cheese for 15 pounds of sausage. Try not to sling it all over the garage. I need to get me a meat mixer or something for this. Now I understand why them guys use those things. I don't have one. So get in there and get it done. Woo, that stuff's cold. Don't be afraid to add water. You want a moist summer sausage anyway, right? Yes, and it's not going to cause it to be waterlogged. It's going to be just great. Don't be afraid of the water. A lot of these little bonus tips are really going to help you out. And I'm going to share them as we go, even though they're not the, the main tips. And one of them is, if you've got a little sausage stuffer, time to upgrade. 15 pound Hocker Brothers sausage stuffer. This thing will make your job a whole lot easier and a lot more enjoyable too. I'll put a link to this also in the description below. This part's gonna be about getting the air out of your sausage so you don't end up with a whole lot of air voids in it. First step is getting it into the stuffer with as little air as possible. So start with wet hands. That way the meat doesn't stick to them quite as bad. Make a meatball and pack as much air out of there as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect, but the more air you get out now, the less air you're going to have in your sausage. And slam it in there. Right, now that we've got that done, hang on a second. Time for a little more stuffing oil. And the toadfish. Start stuffing now. Here's another part about getting the air out of your sausage, and this is actually the tip. Pack it tight. You are not going to blow these casings out, believe me. You can put a lot of pressure on it, especially with a nice stuffer like this, and that will get just about all of those air voids out of your sausage. So pack them tight, pack them tight, pack them tight. 
you can tie or use hog rings. I'm going to use the hog rings this time because I think it's just a lot easier than tying. I'll put a link to the hog ring pliers and hog rings down below as well. Really good tool to have. There you go. That should be pretty much air free. Here's another good sign that your meat was cold enough and it's packed tight. Notice there's no smearing of the fat in this clear casing. All done. Tip number four. Cure them in the fridge overnight. I know there's some quick cure stuff that you don't have to do this, but it's going to be better if you'll cure it in the fridge overnight, smoke it or cook it the next day. Tip five. Start low. We're going to bring the sausage up slowly and we're going to start at a really low temperature. All right, it's the next morning. The meat temperature is 39 degrees. We're going to set the smoker on 125 for now, just to start. And we're going to set the time for 10 hours, just so we don't have to worry about that for a while. We've put a probe right in the middle of the sausage that's in one of the cooler parts of the grill. We'll probably add another probe to one over there as well. We even got a little baby sausage in here. So starting low is going to help that meat come up to temperature evenly. We're not worried about smoke right now. We're just worried about starting to dry these things out a little bit. So they're going to go for a couple hours right like this. You don't have to use a smoker. I like using a smoker. But you can do this in the oven pretty much the same way. Follow these same guidelines and you'll have great sausage. Tip six, run your cooker temperature at about 50 degrees or 55 degrees above the temperature of the meat and try to keep it there throughout the cook. Hopefully this will show up. Right now the meat's running at about 100 degrees. Show you the meat probe here. 98. And our cooker temperature is set at 150 degrees. So that's about 50, 55 degrees higher than the temperature. With a fluctuation, it'll fluctuate about 5 degrees either way. And that's where you want it. This will be the same even in an oven. The idea is we want to bring the whole sausage up to temperature together. We don't want the outside getting a whole lot hotter than the inside. If you do that, if you cook it too hot too fast, the outside will render the fat and make the outside just really grainy and dry and nasty and ruin the whole thing. So we got to bring it up nice and easy with a good consistent temperature to try to keep the temperature the same all the way through the sausage. Tip number seven, get them out about 152 to 155, but try not to let them get over 155. The closer to 152, the better. This keeps you from rendering the fat, which will make the sausage really dry and kind of nasty and keeps everything nice and moist. Ouch, that's hot. And here's tip eight, but there's one more quick bonus tip after this. Tip eight is get them straight into an ice water bath to stop the cooking process when you pull them off the smoker or out of the oven. Man, look at how pretty that one came out. Woo! Now, as long as that took to cook these things, it's liable to take a good 45 minutes or so to cool them back down. So leave them in the ice bath until they're completely cool. And then the bonus tip is going to come into play. And of course, you know this means it's time for a little bit more of that stuffing oil, right? Once they've got nice and cooled off, go ahead and pull them out of the ice bath, dry them off real good, and we're going to hang them up to bloom. That's your bonus tip there. Those first eight tips are going to make your sausage perfect, and hanging them up to bloom just helps everything get all melded together. I like to hang mine up for a few hours, and then go ahead and put them in the refrigerator. Tell you what, that's going to be some good stuff right there. Go. Last one. Boy, that one's got some nice color on it. There we go. All right, it's the next day, so let's go ahead and take one of these and cut it and see how it worked out. Oh man, look at that. Almost no air voids and perfectly done all the way through the same. That is exactly what we're looking for. That is why you don't overcook it. That is why you use a lower temperature. That is why you use a 50 degree temperature differential all the way through the cook. And that's why you take 11 hours if it's necessary. Cut a slice off of this and show you. Look at that. Peels right off of there. Very easy. And you can tell this sausage is cooked exactly the same all the way through. That's why you use lower temperatures and take your time cooking it. Mmm. Man, this is moist, perfect. This is how you do it perfectly. That'll make you want to hit one with your car. 
So there you go. There's your eight tips to making perfect venison summer sausage. If you've got questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do the best I can to answer them for you. I'll put a link up there to the rest of my venison sausage videos right up there in the cards. Also, if you follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages, linked in the description below as well. There's all kinds of extra stuff that comes out on there on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and the bell icon so you don't miss any videos like this one. We'll see you next time. Jamming it in there is a lot better if you don't miss. I don't need that many. Dummy. I don't think we need that fish hook right there. <laughs>